in conditions better fit for a duck. The Hawkeyes stopped the Northwestern Wildcats Saturday. Mark Velasa connected with Quinn Early for a record pass that brought the Iowa faithful to their feet. And the Hawkeye defense swept the Wildcats right off of their feet. A waterlogged victory and more on the Hayden Fry Show tonight. The Hayden Fry Show is being brought to you in part by Amana Refrigeration and the Amana Retailers of Iowa. When you know exactly what you want, Amana. And by John Deere Consumer Products. Remember, nothing runs like a deer. Now, I realize uh, on the Hayden Fry Show on location, this may look like the Star Wars set, but actually it's the weight training room, which is such a big part of the Hawkeyes' preparation and uh, part of the giant football complex uh, just uh, outside Kinnick Stadium and just, as a matter of fact, connected with the bubble. And uh, so, Hayden Fry, it's not Star Wars, but uh, it's just about Star Wars when you uh, take to the uh, gridiron uh, in the tough Big Ten because... I guess we found out against Northwestern there are no gimmies anymore in Big Ten play, are there? Uh, it was an extremely competitive game, Jim, and uh, this weight room facility is uh, where the big guys have become larger. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, we're going to talk about that in detail a little bit later. Hayden, uh, that was a heck of a game Saturday. I mean, it was uh, played in terrible conditions, but all kinds of big plays, all kinds of excitement, and you warned all week long, this is a bona fide football team we're playing. Well, not only did uh, Northwestern uh, have a much better football team this year on offense and defense, but uh, I hope we never have to play another uh, team whose coaching staff has uh, publicly uh, made a comment that they're not going to be back next year mm -hmm. because those young men at Northwestern truly respect and admire the coaching staff, and it's kind of sad to see that coaching staff leave. Well, they played it like it was their bowl game, didn't they? We're going to take a look at the first half highlights and weather conditions. As you know, if you were at the game, were just miserable in terms of... Uh, of uh, the rain, the steady rain, a cold rain. You can see it down on the field right now. But both teams played their hearts out. It was a heck of a ball game to watch. Dubik kicking off to uh, Robert Smith. He runs it back for about 15 yards. And you can see the Wildcats came to play, didn't they? Well, they certainly did, Jim. I thought uh, Northwestern just did an excellent job on offense and defense. And Rick Bayless uh, for a gain of three. Rick had himself a great day, didn't he? Rick Bayless uh, rushed for close to 185 yards in a ball game, and uh, our offensive line once again did a super job of blocking. And Robertson over left guard for a gain of two. Now, it was a back and forth game early, Jim. We couldn't move the ball. They couldn't move the ball. Uh, we partially blocked the punt. Uh, we blocked the field goal. And now we have the ball, and this is Mark Velasic uh, throwing a strike, uh, I believe that's to uh, Quinn Early. Great to see him back, isn't it? First time he's played this season, he was injured uh, during two days, and he had a great day. As you know, he broke uh, the Iowa pass record with a 93-yard TD catch. And there you see the guy that got uh, about 185 yards rushing. Rick Bayless behind a blocking of... Uh, the whole left side of the line, particularly Dave Hudson at fullback, but that was Rob Howland hitting a 44-yard field goal. So the Hawks take a 3 to nothing lead early, and now we'll watch Northwestern once again and watch the Hawks on defense. Almost had that. Keaton Smiley. And I think Keaton broke his chain. He's been getting at least one interception each game. He had that when he dropped it. Tremendous play by J.J. Puck, a linebacker from Cedar Rapids, Iowa, and John Breeze, a big tackle from, uh, I believe he's from Forest City, Iowa. Okay, and here we see Bayless once again, shifting gears, picking up uh, nine yards. Great job there. They did an excellent job of stopping us again, Jim, and now you see Northwestern with the ball. Look at this play. He's going to strip the ball out. Keaton Smiley strips the ball out. George Davis right there on top of it. So the Hawkeyes are back in business again. They have the ball. And now watch a great run here by yeah. David Hudson. Look at that guy. Actually runs over the free safety. 242 pounds. He, he's a tremendously powerful young man. But he was injured later in the game. We'll find out about his condition. We're going to watch it in slow-mo now. Look at those churning legs of his. Can't and stop him once he gets going, can you? He's a great, great football player. And he has two more years remaining after this season. Okay, will he be ready for Ohio State? I doubt it very seriously, Jim. But the Hawkeyes now have... Taking a 10 to nothing lead, and now Northwestern trying to get on the march. D. 
beautiful defensive play by Rick Smith reaching in front of the uh, intended pass receiver. Here's the pass we're talking about. That's right. This is the bomb. We fake the play action run inside. Mark Velocic going to Quinn Early. Quinn Early from Great Neck, New York. And he's a sprinter. And you can see his speed right there. We'll watch that on replay now. Beautifully timed by Velocic. That ball had to travel 50 or 60 yards in the air, didn't it? Probably close to 60 yards. He throws just behind the goal line. And uh, excellent blocking by the uh, offensive lineman in the backs. It's great to see early back in the lineup, isn't it? Quinn was the number one wide receiver when he was injured just prior to our first ball game, and we played, uh, was it six games now, or seven games? All right. And this is his uh, first opportunity to show us what he can do this year. Here's Greenfield. Another fine play by Kenny Sims. Kenny had an outstanding ball game. Once again, he certainly did. Greenfield is trapped for a loss. Dave Haight, Bruce Gear. Brad Quast, all three of those young men had outstanding games again, just like they did last week against Michigan. And there we see, I think, Brad Quast getting the job done. Here's Greenfield again. Oop. Incomplete. Puck breaking it up. Field goal, no good. Or rather, we should say field goal attempt is good. So no questions on the board, and that makes it 17 to 3. Now watch uh, David Hudson run here, Hayden. Well, David, uh, you know, you just cannot uh, ar arm tackle David. He has tremendous strength, runs over people, gets the extra yardage. I think our guys are really inspired each time uh, his number is called to run with the ball. They block a little bit harder. Here's Greenfield again of Northwestern. Tries the option around the end. Bruce Gear turned him around, but Bruce can't find the ball, <laughs> and the backside pursuit catches up with Greenfield. <laughs> Greenfield's an exceptionally uh, tough quarterback. Right, well, Look at one, this play. What happened on this one? We way? had a defensive breakdown. Uh, this hasn't happened to us in years and years. This young man ran for close to 90 yards, and Jim, we'd only been giving up 68 yards uh, rushing the whole. Uh, uh, the average per game was third in the nation in rush defense. Right, that's only the second rushing touchdown against you all year. He had 150 yards in the first half. That's right. Well, we came right back, and uh, now we've got the ball. This is Velocic uh, throwing the ball downfield. A real fine catch by Jimmy Morrow. Picks up 21 yards on this play. Pretty slippery out there, wasn't it? Very slippery. Very difficult to throw the ball accurately. Uh, this is Mark going again over the middle to Jimmy Morrow. It's a gain of 26 yards. And now we'll see uh, Mr. Hudson in action. Draw play to David Hudson again, running over people. Sinlinger and uh, Wester, Gamble, Dave Croston, Bob Cratch, all those fellas up front did an excellent job of blocking. Okay, what happened on the field goal here? I guess he just... Uh I just barely went off to the left, Jim. It was an extremely close uh, kick. Well, you can see that score is 17 to 10. That's the end of the first half. Uh, chilly, cold, rainy, just about everything else. And uh, Northwestern very close to you. I mean, too close for comfort. Well, uh, as I said, they played inspirational football, and uh, I certainly can't say enough nice things about Northwestern football team. On the other hand, uh, I'm extremely proud of our football team because we did what we had to do in order to win. I think we still made right at 500 yards to total offense. And other than three or four defensive plays, Jim, our defense was just super. Sure was a patchwork defense, but what a job they did. We'll see more of that in the second half on the Hayden Fry Show tonight. Well, Hayden, we always ask you the same question. What would you talk about at halftime? <laughs> Maybe you'll let us record that sometime. Well, I think I probably asked questions to the team. I, I want to know if they realized that Northwestern was for real. You know, we go back uh, each week and... Uh, talk to the team about uh, some of the major college football teams are supposed to win by big scores and they're not only uh, played extremely well for the other team but many of them are upset mm -hmm. and I was referring to the team in regards to Tennessee's season where they'd lost to Army and uh, they were so down that uh, the next week they're just blown away by Auburn and uh, it's very easy to happen to any established program on any given Saturday and uh, our guys, uh, you know, they knew at halftime that Northwestern really was for real, but we'd already let Northwestern establish some mo momentum 
and they were really hot the second half. Well, as Nebraska found out of Colorado, uh, how tough these teams could be. You can't go by what, uh, I guess, what the team records are, and certainly not in the case of, of Northwestern. The second half is underway. The rain is still going on. Here come the Wildcats. Dave Haight just had a super game, didn't he, once again? Yeah, he really did. Uh, all of the defensive linemen played well. There's only five bodies that were healthy enough to play. Now watch this. The guy catches the ball three yards beyond the line of scrimmage. He's got three linemen downfield, eight yards in front of him. And they all do an excellent job, and that's a touchdown, according to the officials. But that's an illegal one. That's an illegal pass, Jim. <laughs> that ball, you can't uh, have the receiver three yards beyond the line of scrimmage with linemen downfield. And the refs didn't catch it. Bayless, left tackle, gain of nine. Now Rick Bayless takes over here in the second half. You can see big Chris Gamble, number 74, pulling, making a fine block. Herb Wester, got to get Robert Smith out of the way there. Either block or move out of the way. <laughs> And Bayless runs over about three people. Uh, this can't say enough nice things about Rick Bayless and how hard he runs. This yeah. was a very poor decision on the part of a quarterback, and uh, Northwestern has excellent field position with the interception. Tackle by flag, gain of 14. But here come uh, the Hawkeyes now defensively. Greenfield fumbles, recovered, no gain. They had an excellent game plan for us, and... Uh, you know, our guys just uh, did a super job with uh, key situations, Jim. Like I say, if they had three big plays, other than those three big plays, our defense did an excellent job. And here comes the big guy rambling down there, the human bulldozer, big, Hudson. Big David Hudson. We certainly hope he'll be ready this uh, week for Ohio State. He has a bad ankle. Okay, look at that play. Now, we'll watch it on replay. That was really an intercepted fumble by Mike Burke, right? Well, that's Myron Kepi, number 77 barreling through there. He hits the young man as he starts to throw. The ball goes up in the air. Mike Burke catches it. Mike used to be a quarterback. He's a defensive end now <laughs> for the touchdown. What a great feeling for a defensive player to score a touchdown. Right. Rob Houtland drills the extra point. That was a big, big play for us. Sure was. Here comes Greenfield again. Beautiful interception by Kyle Crow from Ankeny, Iowa. Big free safety. He's only one of two uh, defensive secondary people, Jim, that's healthy. Okay, now the Hawkeyes with the football once again. He got penalized there, but right back again with Bayless. Right. Keen and nine. Excellent running. Mike Flagg and Craig Clark and Marv Cook, all three did excellent jobs blocking him from the tight end position. We used two tight ends quite a bit in the game. Great field goal kick there by Rob Houtland. That is 46 yards. Here are the Wildcats. They always had that tight end in motion. Right. It's Dave Haight, Brad Quas, George Davis. Dan Worth had a good ball game. J.J. Puck had a good ball game at linebacker. Here comes another big interception for the Hawkeyes. Oh, wait a minute. First of all, we're going to see that line play, and you see number 77, Kepi, makes the first hit. Here's right. that deflected pass. That was deflected by Kepi, number 77. What is job he's doing. He's in on everything. Interception by Rick Smith from uh, St. Louis. And nice pass now to Quinn Early once again. I thought Mark Veloci did an excellent job here. The intended receiver was covered. He's searching now. Quinn Early works himself free. Makes a beautiful catch. Great. Now here's a costly fumble. It certainly was. Uh, Dave Hudson was injured. Our number two and number three fullbacks played the rest of the game, and both of them had costly uh, fumbles. Very well played ball, again, by Rick Smith and uh, Kyle Crow. And here come the Wildcats now, and <laughs> going in reverse gear. Helmets flying all over the place. There was some hitting on that one. It's Dave Haight, J.J. Puck. So Iowa gets the ball back, and here's Rob Houtland once again. The wind catches this one, Jim. You can see right before it gets there, it blows it off to the side. The wind was really swirling down on the field during the ball game. Very slippery, very bad conditions, as they have been a large part of the fall. Now Greenfield. Watch this job by Keaton Smiley on defense, number 44. Excellent okay. defense. Batted down by Smiley. Now the Hawkeyes. And now we're going to see Bayless go to work, Hayden. I think he... Must have averaged over 10 yards to carry on this particular drive. Well, he does a great job. We've done a little bit better job blocking downfield. I yeah. told some of our linemen I was going to get a horn for them so they could honk when they ran by some of those <laughs> defenders. 
Excellent move by Bayless again. Watch him. <laughs> On a wet surface, that's yeah. just tremendous running. Keeping his balance and following his blockers and doing a lot of it himself. That was an 18-yard game. Here we oh, go man. back inside again. Extra yardage. Mark Sendlinger had another tremendous football game. He played his best game last week against yeah, Michigan. Bass trying to get in there and fumble the ball. That's really sad. We had a great drive right down on the one-foot line and uh, handed the ball off to a fullback, and he fumbles into the end zone. Robertson over left guard just for a gain of two. That's John Brees at the bottom of the pile. Sims. Kenny Sims had it right in his hand for an interception and dropped it. Very well played. Northwestern makes a big decision here to go for a field goal rather than a touchdown. They get the field goal. 27-yarder by Dubik. That makes it 27 to 20, but time is rapidly running out. We've got about two minutes left to play here. Well, Jim Northwestern tried an onside kick, and uh, we got the ball before it went 10 yards, and now we're just running out the clock. Look at Bayless. He'll lose two, three. Incredible. Yeah. Run Gains 11 yards. Once again, another play. Bounces the ball outside, up the field. Look at him run hard. He's got beautiful body lane. He's always going north and south. Just uh, picks up 14 yards on that one. The game is over. Hawkeyes won a hard-fought battle, 27 to 20. But as you said, Aiden, uh, lost in the shuffle, maybe, the fact that you got right at 500 yards in total offense. So you've got to be happy about that. We did. Uh, we did an excellent job, uh, Jim, but uh, we were inconsistent. That's the reason we didn't score more points. And, uh, of course, we have to give credit to Northwestern. They kept coming up with a big play. They played the game of the year. They admitted that afterwards, and you still won it, and I guess that's the important thing. Talking about important things, weight training is such a part of the modern football program, and Iowa's facilities are among the best in the nation. We're going to take a look at the weight training room right after this. Earlier this week, we talked with weight training coach Bill Dervich about the Hawkeyes' strength program. Let's take a look. One of our basic exercises that we have our offensive linemen do is the bench press. This exercise here develops the pectoral major muscles, also the triceps and deltoids, which are very, very important for an offensive lineman for pass blocking, to be able to keep that defensive player from reaching the quarterback. Uh, it's very important in keeping the shoulders uh, s strong and helping that and uh, re reduce the injuries that we may possibly have as an offensive lineman. One of our objectives in our weight program is to make sure we have a balanced football player. Here, Bill Anderson is working on the latissimus dorsi muscle, which is the opposite muscle of the chest. After we finish that with the bench press, we're going to go and work the large lat muscles of the upper back so we can have, make sure that we have a balanced football player with strength not only in the front part of his body but also in the back part. Dave Alexander here is performing a bicep curl. Again, we concentrate working on the biceps. It's an important muscle. It's not just an exercise to make big arms for the girls, but in order to help protect the shoulder area in the game of football. Dave here is also an offensive lineman, and we want to concentrate on working the bicep so that we can work it to its full range and develop the strength it needs. We just finished up with an arm exercise doing the bicep curls, which is the front part of the arm. We're now finishing up the back part of the arm, which is called the tricep. Here, Peter Marciano, the nephew of the great Rocky Marciano, is doing tricep dips, which is very important in developing the back part of the arm. Here at the University of Iowa in our strength training program, we try to work on three areas that are very important to a football player. Number one, improve his physical attributes. Number two, become a student of the game. And three, practice. And this area here where Peter is working is in the stomach area, which is developing the strength in the midsection, which we feel is very important for a football player to develop the midsection, not only the front part of the midsection, but also the back part. Well, we've seen up uh, Hidden Peter Marciano really working at it, Dave Alexander before that, and even though they differ in size, they really go at it. Has weight training, since you've been a football coach, become more and more important each year as you go along? No question about it, Jim. Uh, we look at weight training as a preventative in regards to injuries. We build up the muscles uh, really for more protection than anything else. But obviously, as we build the young men up, when they hit someone, it hurts the other guy. Yeah. You, got, you got people weighing up there now commonly around 285, 290 pounds. 
Uh, some of these young men is just unbelievable. Some of the, Chris Campbell, for example, number 74, he weighed 215 when he uh, came here as a freshman. He's playing this year 297. Absolutely unbelievable, and the Hawkeyes are hoping for an unbelievable, unbelievable performance. If I ever get it out here, I guess Ohio State Saturday will take a look at the Buckeyes right after this. Aiden, the Buckeyes knocked you out of first place a year ago at their place, but the last time you played them at Kinnick Stadium, you won. Can you do it this Saturday? But Jim, I think it's going to be one of the better games of the year. They have a fantastic football team. Carsadas, uh, he's you know tremendous throwing the football, and uh, we've got a pretty good football team. Our big deal is to get people well and healthy. Well, Ossick will play quite obviously. I guess he had a good day Saturday. Uh, will David Hudson play or don't you know? Uh, no, I can't answer that. This is too early. Well, good luck to you. Go after the Buckeyes. And uh, we don't have to, have to tell the fans what it means to play Ohio State in any season. So we'll have highlights of uh, the Ohio State game on the Aiden Fry Show next week. You tune in. been brought to you in part by John Deere Consumer Products. Remember, nothing runs like a deer. And by Amana Refrigeration and the Amana Retailers of Iowa. When you know exactly